Hi there booktube! My name is Cristina and today I'm here to finally, even if a little bit late, to film my wrap-up for middle grade March. Well, first of all, I can tell that this year middle grade March really was kind of a savior because it arrived at the exactly perfect time since as you all know, March was the month when a lot of countries started to be locked down and isolation and so on. But I won't delve into this kind of sad topic right now and I just want to focus on the bright side now in this video. And the bright side is that middle grade March was there to save the day because middle grades are, first of all, I love middle grades, generally speaking, because they are able to convey deep messages, they are able to really portray the best and the worst of a human being, and usually it's so non-judgmental and so deep at the same time. And the big, big plus for me is that there is no teenage angst in middle grade books. We're just completely focused on the story, on the characters, and if there are romances, they're very, very minor usually, like crushes or stuff like that. So I really love middle grades. And for this month, I decided to read five middle grades book. Well, first of all, I have to tell you that unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish all the five books. And the one that I left kind of behind is The Keeper of the Lost Cities. I will for sure in the future get back to it. It's the first in a series. I own a box of five books, even if there are more out there, I am aware. And I left this one behind just because I had no time, actually, but I will read it. I'm still interested and I will for sure, for sure read it. But let me get to the four books that I actually read. The first one was an audiobook and it was from the desk of Zoe Washington and it was actually a book that is a new release from 2020, one of my anticipated releases of this winter and I was able to read it because I had it on my audiobook platform and so I listened to this book. Well, I have to tell you, four stars, well-deserved, round, full, four stars. For me personally, four stars is a very good rating. It means that I liked and enjoyed the book very much. It just means that it's not like my favorite ever or that I don't feel the need to reread it necessarily, but that I really enjoyed the content of the book. And in this book, we are following the story of Zoe Washington, who is, I believe, an 11 or a 12 years old girl. And uh, she lives her life, she has a great passion, that's bakery, she's an amazing baker, she lives nearby with her best friend and they're recent, they've recently just like had uh, an argument so they're not speaking to each other and uh, it's her birthday and on her birthday she's the one to get the mail that day surprisingly usually it's her parents but that day she's there so she takes the mail and she sees a letter and it's a letter from her biological dad who is actually in prison and so thanks to this she starts to delve into her history to try and understand if her father is really guilty or not why she has never received anything from him and suddenly after 12 years he writes to her and stuff like that so we have some main themes and of course one is family family bonds the importance of family uh, and a smaller kind of theme is friendship and the importance of forgiveness and one big big theme in it that was completely unexpected and it really was the thing that made me love this book was the theme of justice because of course of course, <laughs> of course, having a character who is in prison means that our young protagonist needs to understand what means justice, how the justice system works. We're in America here, and for the first time, she's introduced to the fact that maybe justice is like not all black and white, and that it's not absolute and that being made by people, there are sometimes mistakes, and moreover, maybe there are some biases. Like, for example, if the justice deals with people of color. 
and here it's a huge topic it is treated in such a delicate and accessible way this is a book that i believe is very important to be read out loud to children and to be read by middle graders because it really introduces an important theme because we're used that when we're children usually they explain to us the morality like this is good this is bad if you act good nothing bad will happen if you act bad there will be consequences but actually there are a lot of in-between situation like maybe someone hasn't done something and he is in prison or vice versa maybe someone has done something and he is not and so there are all of these different shades that we need to take into account and this was a very very enjoyable read plus something that I will keep with me forever from this book a lot of outside noises today because people apparently are doing whatever in their houses no idea of what but yeah who we'll had the noise as a background and what I was selling yes that I will keep something forever with me from this book and it's actually a song I discovered a beautiful beautiful song if you will not read this book doesn't matter but please go and check out the song it's hanging there hang or hang on little tomato something like that I will write the title I'm horrible with titles and singers and stuff like that but I listen to it so often it's so beautiful just musically beautiful and I like it I like it so so much it's in my favorite playlist now so this book really gave me a gift otherwise I don't know how I will have ever discovered this song so yeah four stars for my first read Next was an attempt to go on with a series and I'm so glad that I've done it because I finally read Percy Jackson and the Olympians The Sea of Monsters, the second volume in this five book series. So we're following Percy Jackson on his second year at Camp Half-Blood and what happens, the adventures that he lives and perfect. I love this one so much. I have to admit I wasn't expecting it. I don't remember enjoying that much the first book, but this one really got me and I will for sure go on with the series. Now I actually can't wait to get to the third one. And here we're following again Percy, we're following Annabeth. Groover is having kind of a side quest and so we're introduced to a new character and that new character, I can't tell you who he is exactly because it's revealed kind of really at the beginning but you need to push through and read about it but he's so precious, I will like put him in a blanket and just protect from the world because he's the most precious thing ever and we're following the adventures of Percy this time as the title says, Sea of Monsters we're going on the sea and so we're discovering new powers, new enemies, new plans and the main like the main story that is started in the first book really goes on. We have some pieces and bits here and there to understand that the main story is brewing <laughs> underneath everything that happens to our heroes and I really enjoyed it. It was very very short, very fast to be read and I will read the third one for sure. I gave this four stars, probably it was like more like 4.5 or something like that. So yeah, absolutely enjoyed it. On the opposite side, I have my next book. And again, it was a second book, this time in a trilogy that now is extended, but for me, I believe that I will stop with the trilogy. I hope so. And it's the second book in The School for Good and Evil, A World Without Princes. That's the second volume. I read the first one a couple of years ago, three years ago maybe, and uh, I have to admit, I, I was remembering like very, very little of the details of the story, but I had the general like idea of a plot in my mind from the first book. So I got into it and boy I hated it I had so many issues with this book so many that actually in the future you will see 
a review of this book because there are some things that really rub me the wrong way and I need to address them. But here we're following again Sophie and Agatha and the continuation of their adventures at the school. I can tell you more because if you've not read the first book then of course it will be spoilery and I don't want to have spoilers here, just know that the direction in which this book goes is... Uh, so if you want to read the first one, read it and you may actually leave it there. Like consider it a standalone, you can do it. I cannot because stupidly enough I bought the full, the full box and so now I have to read the third one because it's there and I want to read it before deciding what to do with this series. But the second one I rated it two stars and I'm feeling kind of generous with it. So take from it whatever you want. I hated how the characters were treated, I hated how the story developed, I hated the core message and the fact that there were no one to really address in the book the fact that this core message is so wrong, so I don't like it. I won't recommend it, I don't like it and moreover I won't recommend it to be read alone by a middle grader because it may be very very confusing and I think that this is something that you as an adult may read because you already have like a behavioral pattern that's very solid and you know what's good and what's bad. Here a lot of things are laid out in such a way that if a middle grader alone reads it, he or she may actually like take into account some very very wrong ideas from this book, so not a fan, not at all. And the fourth and last book that I completed during March was Wondersmith. And for this one you actually may see my very first vlog ever that I filmed while finishing this book in the last days of March. This book is so good, I enjoyed it so much, it's just like the first one with all of the good feelings and the adventures and the characters that we started to love that are explored a little bit more. Everyone is a little bit more grown up at the end of this book, so one more year passes from in this book since the first one that we read. And this is the continuation, the second one of Nevermore. I cannot again delve into it too deep because I don't want to give spoilers. But we are leaving the adventures of Morrigan in the Woonsock society. So, of course, a lot of things <laughs> may go wrong, and believe me, they go wrong. But a lot of things may even go for the better. And that's the beautiful part. So we're following all of our beloved characters and we're having here, like again, just like for Percy Jackson, we may see that there is, underneath there is like this main theme that's brewing and getting ready for the next step. There are some very interesting dialogues that really give you like an idea of what may happen in the future and leave you with a lot of questions and with the desire to absolutely, absolutely read the third book that will be coming up this uh, summer and I will do my best to buy it for myself, like maybe it comes out in August so maybe I will buy it as a late birthday present for myself, <laughs> something like that. But absolutely recommend it, I gave it 4.5 stars, I don't know why I'm so picky with giving 5 full stars to books, I'm not sure why I'm afraid of giving 5 stars, but it's very very good please go into it. Probably the only reason why I've not gave it like full 5 stars is because I hoped to feel a bit more of emotions. I definitely had some, so at certain moments I was a bit anxious, at certain moments I was happy, but I was hoping for something more because it's like I know that this author can do more, I don't know why I have this feeling and so I'm just waiting for it to finally come into reality and to conquer me and whisk me away. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely love this one, absolutely a recommended series and uh, since I had a video in the past and I will link it down below in which I was analyzing if the first one Nevermore is actually 
similar to the first one in Harry Potter. Here on the second one, I have to tell, it's nothing like it. It's an adventure on its own. The only thing that's very, very similar is that in this book, we analyze a particular aspect of the uh, wondrous myth uh, society and world in general and it's like tricky lanes and alleys and just roads that change direction and it made me think about Diagon Alley at the beginning of the second book of Harry Potter so that's the similarity that I found here otherwise no it's a story of its own and it deserves to be loved as it is so please go and read the first one you won't regret it and yeah, this was my wrap-up for middle grade March. Actually, I have to tell that it had its ups and its downs, but it was moreover an enjoyable adventure. And so I'm very glad that it's over, that I was able, thanks to it, to go on with three of the series that I started in the past, and I hope that I will be able to sooner or later read uh, The Keeper of the Lost Cities that I left behind because it deserves to be read. It's a chunker, but it deserves to be read. <laughs> and let me know down below if you took part in Middle March, uh, Middle March, Middle Grade March, or if you've read any of, any of these books or if you're planning to read them, just let me know down below. And if you have any books that really make you feel light and happy and maybe our middle grades. So this was it and I will see you very very soon in my next video. Bye! Ciao!